All right, so you want to throw a time paradox at your players. Buckle up, because today we're diving deep into time travel in your D&D games. Yeah, and we've got a great guide for this deep dive. We're cracking open the time travel for Dungeons & Dragons supplement. And you know what I really like about this supplement? What's that? It actually lays the groundwork. It doesn't just throw a bunch of time travel spells at you. It builds an entire concept of how time functions. All right, so lay it on us. How does time work in this system? Picture this. Temporal prime. Okay. It's not just some abstract idea of a timeline. It's a place that you can imagine it like almost like a physical place where all of time exists. And get this, flowing through temporal prime are rivers, literally rivers of time. Whoa, hold on. Rivers of what? Rivers of time, and they're representing different planes of existence. So there's a river for like the Forgotten Realms, yeah. a river for Eberron, all in this one crazy space. Exactly. And it's not just some visual thing. The supplement even suggests that you could actually have your players journey to Temporal Prime. But for this deep dive, I think we're going to focus on how it connects to time travel for your games. Okay, I'm with you. So within these rivers, you have these glowing strands called lifelines. Each lifeline represents a creature. So like one of my players' characters would have a lifeline. Yeah. Or that mischievous goblin they fought last week. Exactly. It would have a lifeline too. It's all there. So if you were to look at a lifeline, okay, you would see all of these big events like births and death as these bright flashes of light. You'd even see smaller moments, maybe a character's first big victory in battle. That time they accidentally set their own hair on fire. Oh man. It's all there. It's a neat way to visualize this idea that every action, every choice leaves a mark on the time stream. Okay, so I'm already like this temporal prime concept is already blowing my mind. But you mentioned time travel. So how does how do we get into actually messing with time? Like how does that work? So the supplement breaks down time travel into two types. Tactical and strategic. Tactical and strategic time travel. Uh. Okay, so what's the difference? So think of tactical time travel kind of like that rewind button on your streaming service. Okay. But instead of just rewatching a scene, you're reliving a crucial moment. So if my players are about to walk into a trap, they could use tactical time travel to like rewind and avoid it. Absolutely. Okay. Or let's say your party just barely lost a tough fight. With tactical time travel, they could potentially rewind and try a different tactic. Got it. So tactical time travel is like small scale, personal timeline manipulation. It's about making those in the moment adjustments. Okay, I like it. Yeah. So what about strategic time travel? That sounds way more intense. Strategic time travel is where your players become like chrononauts, adventurers journeying to different points in time. It's okay. less about like correcting a recent mistake and more about, let's say, exploring historical eras or maybe even preventing a future catastrophe. Wow. So this is like, instead of rewinding a few seconds, we're talking about hopping between entirely different episodes or right? like the entire history of your world is open for exploration. That's the beauty of strategic time travel. It allows for those like really epic sweeping adventures. Yeah, I can already imagine my players wanting to go back in time to witness like the founding of a kingdom or travel to the future to see how their actions have shaped the world. Right. That's That'd be amazing. But of course, with that kind of power comes a whole new set of challenges. <laughs> Risks, like paradoxes, right? I mean, you can't talk about time travel without addressing the elephant in the room. Yeah. Paradoxes. Exactly. What happens if my players decide to go back in time and meet their past selves? Right. Do we get a temporal explosion? Like, how does this work? Paradoxes, yeah. the bane of every time traveler, right? But this supplement doesn't shy away from those mind-bending possibilities. So what happens What happens if one of my players yeah. like decides they absolutely have to go back in time and meet their past selves? Okay. Do we get, like, a temporal explosion? Yeah. How does that work? Not quite. So remember how we were talking about those lifelines and temporal prime representing yeah. every creature across time? You can't erase a lifeline. You might be able to change events, but your essence, your soul, is always going to exist somewhere in the time stream. Oh, okay. Yeah. So even if, I don't know, you accidentally prevented your own birth, right? you wouldn't just like blink out of existence? Exactly. You might end up with different parents. You might have a different upbringing. But that core part of you, your soul would find a way to exist. It really leans into that idea that even if you change the past, you can't completely erase who you are. Okay, so that's like that's a really interesting way to handle that classic 
grandfather paradox. Right. And it keeps things interesting, right? Because it's like, yeah, you can try to change the past. Right. But you're always going to have to deal with the consequences of those actions. And speaking of consequences, what about the butterfly effect? Yes. Because if my players are traveling through time, I guarantee they're going to be worried about accidentally like stepping on the wrong butterfly and destroying the kingdom in the present. Right. Did I just doom us all because I tripped over a gnome in 1452? Exactly. Exactly. Well, here's where it gets really interesting. The supplement suggests that the time stream is surprisingly resilient. Okay. Small changes tend to smooth themselves out. Yeah. It's those big game-changing actions that have the potential to really shake things up. So, like, if my players go back in time and they accidentally help, like, an evil tyrant rise to power. Right. That's going to have some repercussions. Absolutely. That's where you, the DM, really get to have fun, right? Right. The supplement encourages you to embrace paradoxes as opportunities to create really cool twists and turns in your game. Oh. So maybe that evil tyrant's reign leads to the creation of some powerful magical artifact that the players now have to deal with, or it alters the political landscape and now there's this whole new conflict that they have to navigate. So paradoxes aren't necessarily a game breaker. They're more like a game changer. Exactly. I like it. It takes the pressure off trying to keep the timeline perfectly intact, and you just kind of lean into the chaos. This is D&D. &D. We're here to have fun, right? Tell some cool stories. Let our imaginations run wild. Exactly. Exactly. And sometimes the most memorable moments are the ones that come from these unexpected turns of events, even if they involve a time-traveling paradox or two. Okay. I am so on board with this. Mm -hmm. But how, how do we actually, like... Practically speaking, right. how do my players do the time traveling? Right. We're talking like magic items, arcane rituals, like what's going on here? So the supplement gives you options, but some of the coolest tools that it introduces are spells. And we're not just talking about your average fireball here, right? Okay. These spells are designed to bend and manipulate time itself. Okay, so hit me with some examples. What kind of time-bending magic are we talking about here? Let's start with something like simple but so useful. The spring forward spell. Okay. Imagine your players, they're in a tight spot, maybe surrounded by enemies. With this spell, they can cast it and poof, vanish for a short time, completely undetectable. It's like a time traveler's get out of jail free card. Exactly. Perfect for like escaping a sticky situation or setting up a surprise attack. Oh my gosh, my players would have a field day with that one. Okay, what else we got? Speaking of classic D&D &D maneuvers... How many times have you been in a session where the dice just weren't on your side? Oh, tell me about it. Yeah. I've had entire campaigns hinge on a single, like, critical fail. Right. So this supplement introduces a spell called Deja Vu. Okay. And you cast this spell, and you can literally rewind time to the beginning of an encounter. Okay. So you get a second chance to replay those crucial moments. So that critical fail... No problem. We're just going to rewind and try it again. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. That's cool. But doesn't that make the players feel a little like too powerful? Like, can't they just keep rewinding until they get like the perfect outcome? Right. So the supplement actually addresses that directly. Okay. Good. It encourages DMs to use these spells judiciously oh, yeah. to enhance the story. Right. Not to make your players feel invincible. So maybe like deja vu is a once per day kind of deal. Or maybe there's some cost associated with using it. Exactly. It keeps the power in check, but still allows for those epic moments. Okay. I like that a lot. So we're talking about epic moments. we got to talk about traveling to like different eras. Where... Right. If we're talking real epic moments, we have to mention Time Reaver. Time Reaver. This is the big one. This mm. is the spell that lets you travel to any point in time, past or future. All right. So time to break out the history books. We're going to have players wanting to meet dragons in their prime. Yes. Visit ancient civilizations, yeah. maybe even like witness the creation of the world. Who knows? The possibilities are endless. And with Time Eaver, they can, but there is a catch. Okay. Remember how we were talking about temporal prime and those rivers of time? Yeah. Pinpointing an exact date in that swirling chaos? It's tricky. So no popping into 1492 for a quick chat with Columbus. Not necessarily. You see, with Time Reaver, there's always a chance of ending up a few decades, maybe a few centuries, or even millennia off the mark, which honestly might make for a more interesting game. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Like, imagine the possibilities. Your players, they think they're headed for, like, this peaceful historical period only to materialize in the middle of a war. Right. Or maybe they're hoping to experience, like, this legendary festival, but they arrive 
like centuries later, only to find the entire city in ruins. Exactly. It adds that element of surprise. Yeah. And it forces your players to really think on their feet. Oh, man. Talk about throwing your players for a loop. I love it. That just screams classic D&D to me. But, okay, so my players have had their fun. They've averted disaster in the past. Or maybe they just realized messing with time is more trouble than it's worth. How do they get back to their own time? Right. We can't leave them stranded in ancient Mesopotamia forever. Although, I mean, that does sound kind of fun, a whole campaign setting. Yeah, maybe next time. But for those times when you need to bring your players back home, you use Slide Home. Slide Home. Okay. It's like the time travel equivalent of clicking your heels together three times. I like that. But instead of ruby slippers, you need a temporal anchor. Okay. So what's a temporal anchor? Right. It's not what you think. It's not like a magic hourglass or anything like that. Okay. Temporal anchors are items with a strong connection to a specific moment in time. Objects with a story. So instead of just saying, like, you find a magic amulet that lets you time travel, it's you discover the long-lost journal of a powerful wizard. Right. And it's filled with these cryptic notes about, you know, bending time itself. Exactly. Or it could be a crown worn by a legendary king or a weapon that's been passed down through generations of heroes. Maybe even something as simple as a child's toy that played some, like, pivotal role in a historical event. Interesting. The point is, it's not just about the object, it's about the story it carries, the way that it connects to time itself. Yeah, it's like giving it, it's almost like giving those items, like, a real weight, you know? Exactly. It's not just like, my players are finding loot. Oh. They're uncovering these pieces of history, these artifacts. I love that. And that's what is so cool about the supplement. It gives you, as the DM, so many tools to weave really compelling narratives around time travel. You're not just dropping your players into random points in history. You're giving them a reason to care. Exactly. It's like we said at the beginning. This is about so much more than just time travel spells. It's about really making time travel an organic part of your games. Absolutely. And for all you DMs out there, don't be overwhelmed. This supplement does a great job at laying the groundwork. It gives you the rules and the inspiration. It's like having a time travel expert sitting right next to you. Yeah. And who knows? Maybe this will inspire you to try something truly extraordinary in your next campaign. And that's what D&D is all about, right? Exploring those boundless realms of the imagination, creating those really unforgettable moments, and with a little help from the Time Travel for Dungeons & Dragons supplement, the only limit is your creativity. So until next time, keep those dice rolling, and may your adventures be filled with just the right amount of temporal chaos. And don't forget to like and subscribe to Arcane Intelligence for more deep dives into the world of tabletop RPGs.